Tell me you've never been mesmerized by the explosive speed of up-and-coming greats like Alabama's Waddle. Or the GOAT himself, his airness, Michael Jordan, exploding past defenders, making them look foolish. This type of acceleration is used all the time in all different sports. Play baseball? Psh, same game, baby. Let's look at base stealing phenom Ricky Henderson, exploding off one plate, stealing the next like he's robbing a buffet line. What's up, y'all? Coach Isaiah here. Welcome to Session the Blessing, a series of videos I'm gonna be dropping on YouTube on the reg, helping athletes and coaches take their game to the next level. The objective of these videos is to teach you how to actually transfer your training to in-game success. We'll be dropping all kinds of videos on all kinds of different topics. Today, we're gonna start in the beginning First step, explosiveness and acceleration. Being able to get off that line, get to the ball, get after that goal, basket, end zone, whatever your sport is, all right? So please feel free to leave comments, questions, whatever uh, under the video. I'll try to get at you guys, give you any further input you might need. Otherwise, Enjoy the video. I got my athlete Eker coming in to help me out. Been training him for a few years. It'll be great because he's just now really starting to evolve in his training. So I'll be able to use him to show you some things he needs to improve as well as things he's doing well that are going to help him tear it up on that basketball court and football field. So let's get in it. Diving into our strength exercises, we're going to start with a split squat. This allows us to strengthen the leg strength in a split position, much like our feet will be while going through sprint cycles, especially with that initial drive of our first step or two. Notice how I'm allowing the knee to push forward in a dorsiflexion position on that front foot. This is important for acceleration. Next, we're going to go into a strength exercise that also builds a little bit of technique and mechanics here in the sprinter box step ups. If you look at Iker at the top here, he's not driving through his hips as well as I'd like. So that's something we're going to look, work on with him. As well as when he hits the bottom, notice how he loads through the hips. Watch right here, comes down, loads through the hips. That's just a lack of strength in that driving leg all the more reason to be doing an exercise like this. Once we're comfortable with this and have our mechanics down, we can add a kettlebell or dumbbell in and shoulder press with that opposite arm. This is just allowing us to get more strength in that core integrity for upright posture, as well as strengthen the arm that pushes forward or comes through swinging to add that power in this contralateral movement. You could also throw in a bicep curl, being that the biceps and deltoids are the two most critical muscles to that arm swing. Again, make sure that posture is correct, driving through the knee and hip on that driving leg, Opposite knee, opposite arm forward, shin angles matching. This is going to cross over into our mechanics when we're sprinting. So it's important that we do these right. And as with everything, we're going to work both sides, being that this is a contralateral movement, meaning unilateral leg to opposite unilateral arm shoulder Going into an explosive motion now, we're going to do box power step-ups, driving that opposite leg up, 
swinging that arm forward, trying to match our shin angles again, getting a nice knee drive and arm swing while allowing that driving leg to press into that box and push our down leg up from an opposite. This is gonna improve the amount of power we can put into the ground as that knee goes up and then drives under us. Broad jumps, great exercise here for improving the same type of power technique we use. Chest and shoulders are in front driving through the hips as we push through the ground. The only difference here is we're doing this bilateral, but still a high crossover in the technique and power generation. Once you've got that down, you can go to a double broad jump. This allows us to get some repeat power, improving our RSI or repeated speed index. See how we still drive through those hips, chest and shoulder forward, even on that second jump. This way we're teaching the body to repetitively express power with that nice forward lean, a beneficial position to accelerating forward and using our body weight to build momentum and help us explode out quickly. Single leg box jumps, another great one. This allows us to build power off of an individual leg. You can see here, Eker's pretty strong off that right leg and gets a nice knee drive with that left knee. Unfortunately, when he switches sides, you can see he struggles more. But if you watch that right knee, it's not driving forward even close to the extent that that left knee was. This is something we're gonna to have to work on that'll exponentially improve his driving power. Working our way into technique, stationary leg drives allows us to put our athletes in the proper position while teaching them good shin angles, as you see here. A knee drive, the knee can't drive too far, those shin angles would be disrupted. And keeping a tight core flat back to maintain the necessary posture Weak posture is going to allow us to have a power leak. Up. We'll lose force from the ground up. We don't want to lose any of our force, not when we want to move efficiently. As we get better at that, we can start to add more leg drives and more power in so that even when exchanging those legs quickly, we're holding the proper positioning. Switching those feet in the air, but coming down on the ball of the foot with a nice hip drive, matching chin angles. Let's get into motion now. Our two-step cone drill. This is a great way to teach ourselves to just be strong and explosive off those first two steps. We're going to start with our starting position. You can see my knees and shoulders are in front of the toes. Nice dorsiflexion through the ankles there. My hips are back so that my legs are loaded like a spring ready to explode forward. That left arm is up big so that I can get a powerful swing in that first step. Now watch as I drive forward. That right knee and left arm are gonna come exploding up. The opposite arm comes back, setting me up for my next drive. You can see my shin angles aren't quite matched, pretty good, but that right heel could be back a little more, allowing me to drive under my body a little more on this step. But then I'm gonna punch through again with that right arm, swinging the left arm back, right arm forward, getting those shoulders past the cones in two steps. That's our objective here. Again, doing the opposite side, Get in a nice starting position and explode. Uh, so we got to get Eager's mechanics that we were working on with that step drill to where he's used to punching those feet under him with his chest forward quickly, as well as to generate more power into the ground. These are exercises that can also be done pushing a sled or pulling a sled or prowler behind you. Since we're not at the turf right now, we're just gonna use the strap. Same idea, same general concept. So on this first exercise, 
He's going to get a forward lean, then when I tell him to go, he's going to slowly march, getting that opposite arm, opposite leg, drive him under him, and put as much force into the ground as he can. The second one we do, he's going to basically do high knees, leaning forward, to work on the rate at which he cycles through his punches with his feet, or increases the foot speed during acceleration. Both the power we put into the ground and the rate at which we can do it are going to make a huge difference in our explosiveness. You ready? Alright. Scoot forward to the field tension. Good. Feet together. Lean. Core tight. Yep, you're just going to march strong steps for good form. So on this next drill, I'm going to have Eager work on his acceleration by getting in a split stance, getting the knees and chest forward over his toes. He's going to react to me dropping the ball, sprint as quick as he can with explosiveness and grab that ball before it bounces twice. So now we're teaching him to be explosive, get off that line quick and to be reactive. So now it's more of an in-game sports-like scenario. You ready? Nice. So that was pretty easy for him. I'm gonna move back a little further, make it more challenging. So here you see Eker is in a good position. He's got that left arm swinging back so that it's prepared to drive forward as that right leg comes forward. His left knee's up in a good position, matching shin angles, ready to drive into the ground, exploding through his second step. All right, so that sums up our first episode. Of session to blessing. I hope you guys learned a lot, picked up some new exercises you can use with your clients and athletes. Please leave any comments or questions you have below. As any great coach will tell you, we're all evolving on a daily basis, always growing. So with all the knowledge I have, I definitely don't have all the answers. And there are a lot of different ways to do things. So I definitely want to hear your guys' feedback and insights so we can keep growing together as a sports and strength and conditioning community. 
All right, until next time, Coach Isaiah, I'm out.